In today's episode, we wrap up our first transfer window here at Kakuta Deportivo and we start our fifth season with an away trip to Boca Juniors de Cali. Roll the intro. Hello everyone, welcome back to Sean Does FM, I hope you are going well. If you are new or returning to the channel then please consider hitting that subscribe button, it will be greatly appreciated. And also if you enjoyed today's video then leave a thumbs up. Today as I said we've got the transfer window roundup and our first game of the season. So as you can see we are on the transfer history page and you look at 2025 and it's been a pretty even window for us so far. We'll get to one of the reasons that's happened in a minute, but in general, what we did was just strengthen our squad depth, especially in the under 20s, as you don't have to register those players, as we went over in the last episode. But after the way we finished last season, I thought this team should really be winning this league this season. It's just about improving the all-round depth, so if we do get an injury, we're not going to miss out on too much. So what we have done in terms of of outs last season we'll get that done first off you see this counts as last season even though it's this year it's game bug i suppose uh we got rid of winston ramirez he was just a two two and a half star player who we weren't going to use yeah 24 years old we felt it was time for him to move on we were able to get 45k for him he's valued at 28 so i thought we did really well with that sale that was the only sale we made before the new season clicked over in terms of incomings john sinistella he is a midfielder we picked him up for $60,000. I thought he was three and a half star rated. He's three star rated, but still he adds really good depth to our squad and considering what he's valued at, getting him for $60,000 was, a again, a bit of a steal. I was really happy with that. He is Colombian, which helps. Only allowed four foreigners. We haven't bought in too many foreigners, which we'll get to, but as you can see, he's a really well-rounded player. Only wants to be a squad player. He will start for us for most of the season, but a good pickup for not much money. After that, on the same day, we bought in Philippe Loman. We, we had some areas that we wanted to improve early in the window. I wanted a, another midfielder, a good quality right back, and I also wanted to bring in another body at centre-back. So Sinistera was for central midfield. As you can see, Loman covers right back. Another player I thought was a little bit better than what he ended up being, according to our scouts, but as you can see, for what he is going to do here, wing back on support, he is very well-rounded and he will do a good job. He's a slight upgrade on what we had. 29 years old, but again, Colombian, doesn't take up a foreign spot. I like his natural fitness, playing a Gagan press style, that is going to be very useful. And we picked him up for 275k, he's worth 300k, so again, we got him slightly undervalued, I felt. And... To strengthen that centre back position, Hyderson Hurtado. I thought this was an absolute steal. He can cover left back and centre back. Another three star overall rated player from Colombia. He's going to be more of a backup centre back for us. Again, pretty well rounded. And considering he's revalued at 46k to pick him up for 8.5, it was an absolute no brainer. Otherwise, free transfers, most of these ones are under 20 players to bolster squad depth. Apart from one, and that is Moises Sandoval. Four-star, 19-year-old goalkeeper. It was just too good an opportunity to pass up. He will be starting for us this season. And at only 19, getting a $58,000 player for free. He's only on 1.6k a week. It was just too good to turn down. Compare him to our captain from last season, John Chavira. And see Sandoval is better in the air by quite some way, and apart from that, they are quite similar. He's Sandoval isn't quite as all rounded as Shavara or Shavira, I should say. You've got the attributes of sweeper keeper, and you see there's a few areas where Shavira has the, the edge. But we're going to give Moises Sandoval a go. Obviously, Shavira is now 32 years old, so I was was thinking about that. And this guy's going to grow, he's going to be really good for us, I think. We'll give him game time, and he should fulfill his potential because he has a little bit of it so he is a good player who should be at the club for quite some time if things go well at least while we're here anyway he was in the dream 11 last year when we got here with atletico huila 
So I think that's a really good pickup on a free. The other ones that we got in at the start of the year, Oscar Larajondo, a young midfielder on a free. He has a little bit of potential. We'll see if we can help him fulfill that and maybe, if not, we'll make a profit on him. 19-year-old Colombian and Juan Payers. Again, on a freeze, valued at 50k for a right back. He actually looks like he's got a bit of potential, so quite happy with that. He is Venezuelan, but we don't have to register him, so he doesn't count as a foreign player, which is great. And then, if we go to this season, the first one that happened, now, Nicholas Gill. He was our best centre-back. His value's gone up since this transfer was made, which now irks me a bit. He was valued when he was here as a $300,000 player. There was quite a bit of interest in him, and we managed to get 400 thousand for him from Independiente Santa Fe who play in the top division. Once that bid came in he wanted to leave and I didn't really feel like standing in his way. He was a free star player with a little bit of growth potentially. Those white stars you know not as locked in as a gold star. So we took that four hundred thousand dollars and right before this game we were able to get Ramani Edmonds Green now. So we've made a 50k profit on that signing. He is English so counts as a foreigner, but he's valued at 375k. He's on a pretty hefty wage, but he covers right back. He's good centre back. And as you can see, he's four star rated. So we've actually upgraded there and made 50k. So I think that's a really good deal. I mean, you look at the pros and the cons. It's a really good deal. We were looking at another centre back initially. He had the same sort of rating. He was a little bit slower, so we might have got away with one there. But we're trying to pick him up for 40,000. That was one of the main reasons we did sell Gil. Unfortunately, that centre back whose name I can't remember. We'll just have a quick look in my shortlist. Bulson, yeah, we were trying to get him off Chepa Coense, and then he went to CRB in Brazil for 41000 but he, that would have been an absolute steal if we got that deal. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, and we had to get Edmonds Green, but that's still a good transfer because we've made money on it. And the only other transfer we have made is a youngster, Louis Carlosa. This was a deal done by our under-20s coach. I've Got him in the first team just to provide an extra body in case we need it. He looks like he is a well, he does have a bit of potential. Decent crosser already, bit of stamina, bit of agility, decent tackler and teammate. He looks a good young prospect. So that's what we've done in the transfer window. And what that means for our team going into this season is that this is how we are going to line up. Sandoval, as I said, comes into the goal. Roman at right back comes straight in. in at centre-back Edmonds Green, only just arrived today. He is at centre-back alongside Carlos Ordonez, who had a few uh, games for us late last season. Quernu has got the left-back role. I am going with him. Acosta was the other option, but he is injured and he can also cover the midfield. So I think Acosta is a really good bench option for us. So that's why we've given Quernu the left-back role, as well as the fact he's quite important for us for long throws and a few set pieces. In the midfield, we are going with Suarez and Caicedo with Sinistera. Sinistera coming in for Garcia, who slips to the bench. So the midfield, pretty similar to what we had last season. Labastidas will hold his right wing spot. Venegas, the young, young Colombian, will remain up front. And one big addition from last season, because we didn't see him because he was injured, is Yacid Muralanda. Very promising youngster, 18-year-old local lad who has pace and agility to burn. I am really looking forward to seeing what he can do in game. So that is how we are going to line up this season. Hurtado, Venegas, who I think we introduced you guys to last season. Solid fringe player. He will cover the other defensive spot on the bench. Garcia Urego, not sure if we introduced you guys to this one. Christian Urego, a free star, mostly attacking midfielder, but can also cover the regular midfield. He is nice and promising. He's a player we might have to give some chances to if he grows this season. Elkin Morillo comes in. I would usually wouldn't have him in the team. I'd have Salas and Acosta as the bench options, but because of that injury, the youngster Elkin Morillo will come in. Again, promising young player. You can see he's growing nicely at the moment. So another player who might force our hand into putting him into the first team more often. And Dio, uh, Diogo D Dario Rodriguez. I'm going to get those two mixed up so much this year getting my Hamilton Wanderers and Kakuta Deportivo Rodriguez is mixed up but he will cover the bench we've got a number of good free star options at striker on the bench the thing about him is he's really good at penalties so that's why he gets the nod at the moment in terms of the season uh so from last season the teams who did get promoted were 
Real Cartagena, they won the league and both the playoff stages. So the team that finished second in the, in the league also got promoted, which was once Caldas. Teams that came down, we'll look at the season pre preview just to make sure here, were Laneros and Aguilas Palela. But as you can see from those odds, we are red hot to go up. 1 over 91. If we don't go up this year, well, if we look like we're not going to go up, we're probably going to be out of a job. Uh, in the Dream 11, Sandoval retains his spot, but now he's our player. Edmonds Green's gone straight in at centre-back, and Venegas up top. So we've got three players, which isn't bad. It doesn't scream out hot favourites, but apparently we are. So hopefully we can start off well. Playing at Boca Juniors de Cali away from home, they are rated 16 out of 16. So given how hot favourites we are in the league, you'd expect us to be winning most of our games this season, but especially this one against Boca Juniors. So there you can see our fitness. Most of the boys are fit, apart from Acosta. Urigo is just coming back from a torn hamstring, 45 minutes. We might give him some time off the bench. But let's get into it. You can see who else is in the league. There's Raul Santander, Union Magdalena we have some experience with, but that is it. Given we did get here so late last season, Boya Kachiko were a team that got beaten in the playoff stages a few times last season. So they're probably one to watch along with those rather gay teams at Lanilos and Aguias Palela. They want us to go defensive? Absolutely not. <laughs> when we're favourites, what are they doing? And I think we'll tell the boys I'm expecting them to win. And that has worked with a bit of faith. We should be good. And indeed we are. So, tunnel interview. Are you confident? Yes, I am. Just quietly. And it's a TV game. So that is how Boca Juniors de Cali will line up. As you can see, they're quite narrow through the midfield and up front. So we might be able to expose them here with our wing backs and wingers. The wingers inside the forwards. So they will cut in and the wing backs will be able to provide some support, hopefully. So this does look like a quite a good matchup for us. Boca Juniors de Cali is the usual Boca Juniors team would be in the blue with the yellow stripe. We are still are in our red and black with the white shorts and we get underway kicking off playing left to right Edmonds Green finds Labastidas who just goes into the box there's a tackle they are able to there's a safe tackle not a penalty Sinistera whips one in Venegas heads it but I think he was offside no okay that was a good chance for us early on it remains nil all after one minute as now Boca Juniors have a Goal kick it is going to go straight to Kuenu. He will dash down that left-hand side. Back to Caicedo. Into Suarez, who was running onto it, threatening to go through a bit of space. Didn't. The ball now switched out to Loman on debut. Labastidas in the box. He'll look to put this across. It is blocked. And will Boca Juniors get us on the county here? Daza. I think that was a player we were looking at, potentially. But it looks like he's joined them. Now back out to Roman. He puts a ball in. Caicedo on the edge. Oh, it's a very good save from the keeper. But unfortunately, it's rebounded. And Hernan Venegas, right place, right time. We'll make it 1-0 to Kakuta Deportivo after one minute. Caicedo with a really nice strike off this cross that Roman is about to put in. Cheeky shot. It's, in fact, I think it's hit the post. That's what's done him. And it's just rebounded, and he, Hernan Venegas, I'll try not to call him Hector, Hernan puts us 1-0 up, a little bit fortunate. Now we've got a, another goal, off a long throw, Venegas at it again, flicks it over the keeper, and it is Jesse Maralanda who gets his first of the season, hopefully the first of many for these two, two really young, promising players up front for us. Long throw put in nicely, he's just chipped the keeper with the header, and Maralanda, thankfully he's onside, because I think the ball was going in anyway, has said, yes please, I'll get a goal. And we are 2-0 up inside 10 minutes and have a chance to make it free from this corner. And it is 3-0. Ordinez gets his head onto it. It is saved by the keeper. Venegas buries it and we are all over Boca Juniors to Cali. Yeah, this is going very well. Um... I think it hit one of our own players, Caicedo, who was marking the keeper, might have blocked that. It's fallen to Venegas, and it made, makes it 3-0. A really good start from us here. Some of 
the goal's a bit fortunate, it has to be said, but I think we might be showing our superiority early on this season. As we have another long throw 15 minutes in, the keeper this time, Asparilla, is able to collect that, and they now send the ball deep, but Labastidas collects the header from Suarez. as he goes inside the box, finds Venegas, who hits the post again. Boy, oh boy, it is well and truly one-way traffic at the moment. 3-0 after 18 minutes, things going very well. Suarez now, as we have another highlight. Roman in the box. Just outside now, he puts a cross in. Maralanda is able to play that back to Caicedo, but he hits the post back for Cuerno. Labastidas, and he is free at the back post. He heads it in. 4-0 inside 20 minutes. Absolutely cruising we are here. And I think we might be justifying those 1 over 91 odds to win the league this season. Cuerno, that is a lovely ball. He is a bit fortunate to be getting played on side there, but very lazy defence from Boca Juniors to Cully. The man who had him just let him go. And that's a free header, and he does not miss those Labastidas. Our front free, four goals already inside 25 minutes. And it's all looking very comfortable, although, as I say that, the high line's caught out. 4-1 now, Eduardo Manjales gets a goal for them, we'll just check how this happened, Diaz puts the ball in and he's caught, our new man Edmonds Green off, well out there, so that's a little bit disappointing, it was going quite well but I think we're going to be okay, it looks the sort of game, that was their first chance of it being clinical against us which I imagine teams might need to be if this is how we're going to play. And now we have a corner. I imagine we're going to get more chances in this game the way things are going. And sure enough, Carlos Ordinez from a corner already helped contribute to a goal. And now he's got one himself, buries that bottom right corner. And it's six goals inside half an hour. Five to us, one to Boca Juniors, 5-1. And another highlight from the kickoff, this game is absolutely nuts. I'm not sure if Boca Juniors is going to be a great team to compare us against this season due to where they're ranked, but that was the first game of the season. I thought I'd bring it to you, and as it looks looks like we might be in a different class to some of these teams this season, although Boca Juniors might be doing something on the counter here, although Sinistera is absolutely working his socks off in the midfield there. Love to see that from a new signing. And now Maralanda has a shot. It is wide, but some really nice... Defensive work there from Sinistera in the midfield. Like to see that. And yet another highlight. There has been absolutely no time to spare in this game so far. Only at the half hour mark. As now Maralanda goes in the box. Tries to cross it in. It's blocked. Caicedo will put one in now. Labastidas. Something happened there. The game got a bit freezy for a little bit. Looked like a shot was blocked and... Now the ball is out wide with Roman. Now Sinistera, he finds Roman Labastidas. This time he is offside, not much of a highlight there. It remains 5-1 after just over half an hour. Long throw, 40 minutes gone. A few bit of time without a highlight. And now Maralanda is able to beat the keeper to the ball, tuck it to his bottom right, or his bottom left, I should say. And it makes it 6-1 before half time. Yeah, just... That pace, that agility coming to the fore there. Snuffs it out before the goalkeeper can. And we are absolutely crushing Boca Juniors de Cali as we approach half time. It is 6 1. And indeed, that is half time. Great performance from our lads so far. Very clinical. Nine shots on target, six going in the back of the net. Now, XG is 3.45 on the match stats, but 2.11 in the match story not sure how that works but either way it's a very good performance from us just that one goal against us we'll see how that works obviously we are we did go back to the high line late last season if teams score goals against us like that we may go back to the standard line we used in new zealand but 
I mean, it's 6-1. We can experiment at the moment and tell the boys that we are very pleased with that. One thing that you will notice here in Colombia in future episodes when we do rundowns is the games do come thick and fast. Not like New Zealand, we are playing weekends and midweek. So I will be, in these situations at least, making the most of substitutions to keep our best players fresh. But we will need to use a bit more squad rotation than we had to at the likes of Caversham and Hamilton Wanderers, where games were played, with exception to the Chatham Cup and the OFC Champions League, where the games were played in midweek. Now, Labastidas and Kuno are tired, as I said. He's only got one goal, Labastidas, so I will take him off. I don't want to bring on someone who is on a, a hat trick. And we'll bring Marillo on, get the youngster some game time, and Kuno will go off for our new lad, Heidison Hurtado. 60 minutes gone, it is still 6-1. So 68 minutes gone, the second half has been extremely quiet compared to the first half, which was just all action. And we have given the ball away, playing out from the back there. Edmonds Green tidies that up, and we'll find Maralanda, who looks to his left and sees Hurtado fresh on the pitch. Our new signing into Casado. Back to Hurtado, he might look to put something in though, back to Caicedo who will, and it is a good header from Murillo, but he was offside, I think it hit the post, but doesn't really matter, does it? Remains 6-1 after 72 minutes. And we've got a throw-in in our own half, 75 minutes coming up, and a good tackle there on Maralando. And the ball after that isn't a good one, it is cut out by Boca Juniors, although that pass... Left a bit to be desired, and Ordinez will head that over to Caicedo, who looks to do something on the counter, and he's got some pace. Lovely work around the defenders, and Venegas, the keeper, is able to dive down to his bottom right and save that, but some really nice work from Caicedo, just jumping, or sorry, jumping, evading defenders. And now we have a couple of shots deflected. Suarez Crosses it to Hurtado, back to Caicedo. Hurtado again. Juan Suarez and acres of space on the right. As we saw earlier, these guys are very narrow formation-wise. And I will make a change. I'm just looking and seeing what a good option is here. And I think we'll take Suarez off. Probably the height, the most suited of our midfielders to their position. And he is also not having a great game. So we'll make that change. Urigo will bring on, and I think... The way that Sinistera made some good tackles earlier, I think we'll put him in the deep line playmaker role. So we'll make that change. That's our subs done. And we'll see if anything else happens in these final 10 minutes. And we do have a corner straight away too. Caicedo puts it in. Ordinez gets his head to it. But over the bar, it remains 6-1. 80 minutes gone. A long throw. 82 minutes. Roman puts it in. It is headed away from the Boca Juniors defence. Long ball in for Caicedo. He had a long shot earlier that hit the post. That one is blocked. And now some interplay between the midfielders. Now Maralanda is attacking down the left. He tries to put a ball in. It is blocked. And Boca Juniors will heap or heave that away. And that wasn't much of a highlight. It remains 6-1 as we approach full time in the first game of the season. And now we have a long throw. Ordinez will put this in. Uh, we did take Quirnu off, so those long throws probably not as effective as they were, though that was a really good chance for Edmonds Green to get his a goal on debut, but he has hit it over the bar. We've created a lot of chances. Luckily, we were very clinical in the first half, and we're now in injury time. It's a long throw. Asprilla claims it. Again, a little bit breezy, the game there. But it is full time with that. And after a seven goal first half, nothing in the second half. An interesting game. Boca Juniors getting that goal, just getting in behind our defence. But on the whole, by that stage, we had absolutely wrapped things up at 4 0. And then we got a few more goals straight afterwards to make it 6 1. Maralanda and Hunan, I guess. I'll get that name right at some stage. But yeah, a very dominant performance to start the season from our boys, and it does bode well for the rest of the season. Although, as we did see at the start of the season, um, in the season preview anyway, Boca Juniors, Dekali are 
probably not the best team to be comparing ourselves against as they look like one of the worst teams in the division according to the media and as expected with that goal difference we will go top of the table you can see Bogota and Valand Upa able to put on a goal fest as well the rest of the game is quite tight they might be two teams to keep an eye on that's Giving me Canterbury United vibes. That amount of goals in the first season, our uh, first game of the season, because I remember that happening at Hamilton Wanderers too. And sure enough, Canterbury United were the team to look out for. But it's a very good start for us. Top of the table on goal difference. Hopefully, we can keep that up and earn promotion to the top tier of Colombia and see how far that will take us before we can jump to a team with Champions League ambitions. Obviously, as discussed when we first got this job, we couldn't get a job that really helped us in the hexagon. So we're just trying to build our reputation up overseas now, I guess. So a really good win to start the season. Uh, one thing that I did forget to mention is we are now studying for a Continental Sea license. One of the reasons that we have gone overseas because Hamilton Wanderers were not very rich and wouldn't let me study for a license. Same with Cavisham, really. They weren't too encouraging in terms of me improving as a coach. It already looks like Kukuta Deportivo are a bit more accommodating in that fashion, and that should help us get that reputation back up to two stars. If we win the league, we might even go up a little bit further. But that will do for today's episode, the transfer roundup, and that first game of the season. A very good start to our time here at Kukuta Deportivo. As I said earlier, if you have enjoyed today's video, Leave a thumbs up and if you are new and enjoyed today's video and want to keep up with this Hexagon Challenge, then make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. It is greatly appreciated. And feel free to leave comments. I try to respond to them as soon as I can. But until tomorrow's episode, that will do. We'll just see when we come back for that one. I will try and get a bit of gameplay done. And interest. I'll keep an eye on the table to see what a good game be. But I think Atletico Huila... Might not be a bad one. The team that we pinched Sandoval from, that could be an interesting game away from home. Or that Aguias Pereira one, a team newly promoted, oh sorry, newly relegated. But we will come back tomorrow for one of those games. And I will see you then. Until tomorrow's episode, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. <laughs>